awake enough to uh, <coughs> visit us talking about Debian Edu. I am Nick, and uh, this is my colleague Wolfgang. We are two of the developers of Debian Edu. Um, today in this short talk, we want to introduce you to Debian Edu. For those of you who uh, don't already know what it is, we will try to keep this ver very short. Then uh, we uh, want to talk a, a bit about what we did in the <coughs> Debian Buster development cycle in Debian Edu 10, which will be uh, as a pure blend released together with uh, the regular Debian 10 release. Oops, sorry. Then, uh, yeah, and uh, together with a few remarkable things from the from the development cycle. After that, uh, I would like to uh, digress a short in, into into the general topic of free software and education, because this is a very very special topic with a very special uh, user base. And finally, uh, we would like to um, present what we uh, what we have planned for the for the bullseye de development cycle and for the bullseye release. Okay, so Debian Edu is a pure blend in Debian, uh, a pure blend uh, for those who are new to the project or haven't heard this term is uh, a set of packages that can be installed on, on top of Debian that do uh, configuration stuff, uh, contain me meta packages to uh, select uh, a pre-selected set of, of software, and uh, using pure blends, you can actually turn Debian into a ta in the, into a distribution that is tailored to a special use case. And for Debian Edu, this means that uh, you can pre-configure a complete educational network for a school, including server operation for uh, a server that does uh, all these complicated things like uh, LDAP, Kerberos for authentication, user management, file storage, backups, monitoring, um, email, the list is very long. And uh, on the other hand, also client operation to set up a computer lab very quickly. You can get a desktop uh, right, from the right from the server and boot into an educational environment uh, with an XFCE desktop. Um, with pre-selected applications, either sorted by, by school level for preschools, uh, secondary schools, or by the subject matter, like uh, software for learning uh, languages, for learning geographics, chemistry, uh, everything like that. And uh, Debian Edu bundles all that and makes it, um, on the one hand, quite easy to, se to set up such a system. Last time we did this in a real school, we, it took us four hours. Um, but also provides advanced management. It uh, allows to do all the advanced stuff you want to do with a with an enterprise class network because it's yeah it is Debian, and uh, you can do everything you can do with Debian. But you in uh, uh, for uh, for starting you get the the whole stuff pre configured, tailored to schools. Okay, Wolfgang. Yes, uh, Debian Edu used to be a um, monolithic kind of thing and it has been the aim to be more modular. That was inspired by Andreas' package Debian LAN config and that is a modular system comparab comparable and you could put Edu packages upon that Debian LAN config installation. So with the Buster release, Debian Edu is modular, more modular. That means you can install that whole network stuff without the educational packages installed at all. So that, that was a feature from Debian LAN config and we have now the possibility to set up a site-specific installation for primary school only or even for preschool and that has been made possible um, by uh, meta packages that are school related uh, school level education level related so uh, this is a meta package 
They stem from uh, Edo Bunto. Um, Edo Bunto had that school level um, packaging, and this is now possible in Debian 2. So this is possible to do a very site-specific installation, and all that has to be done is, at installation time, simply remove desktop um, equal XFCE from the kernel command line. Then you get all this, you get a naked system and can install a of it. That was one goal. Second goal was to have um, better localization. Debian Edu used to ship localization packages for, I guess, eight languages. That was a random set. Now it is possible to have the localization for each language that is available in the Debian installer. So when you do this in the common way, say always use default, then you end up with a, a localized system for that language with all packages installed, even for Thunderbird localized. And uh, it is even possible there's a script when you have a country with several languages or you are a bilingual school or something like that, you can support different languages. That's use the standard tool, um, local tools, and then you can choose languages that should be supported. Then there's a script and all language-related meta packages, packages are installed and then you have a localized system for all these languages and students can choose their environment. As an example, if you are in Switzerland, you might have end up with three or even four, I don't know exactly, languages. Um, Okay, the, this all is made possible because the um, Debian CD team supported us to have officially created packages and besides the net installer image, we have now a huge image, uh, almost uh, six gigabyte, and we are able to install everything that I've told you out in the woods without any internet connection. So this is, I guess, good for countries that are not so developed. You can put a lorry with old equipment, network stuff, drive out into the woods, you only need electricity, and you are able to set up a, a whole school lab. Okay, thank you, Wolfgang. Um, yeah, there are uh, an, a few other points uh, on this slide. Uh, we do not want to go into detail okay. about this. Um, yeah, M for those who are very much interested in this, uh, please find <coughs> us uh, during the conference. Uh, yeah mostly in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> yeah, um, I want to do a short digression uh, into the field of uh, education and free software and education in general. Um, we see today that there is a very rapidly growing, growing movement towards open education, but it's uh, quite focused on open educational res resources like uh, open textbooks, open worksheets, open materials for um, for teaching stuff. The uh, the software side, uh, the the free software side, is um, a very different topic. It's mostly due to uh, to due to political uh, issues, at least in in Germany and probably in most other countries. Uh, there are contracts with large software companies. There is this uh, impression that uh, students need to learn how to use uh, certain, pr certain products instead of learning how to use a computer, which is uh, 
not the case, really. Uh, it would be more important if students learned how a computer w works and how software works in general, and they can learn the, uh, the consumer stuff on, on top later. But this is nothing that, uh, you ca that we succeeded at uh, conveying to uh, the, the, the high decision makers uh, in, in education. But there is a growing interest in, in that stuff. Teachers, both uh, computer science teachers, but also teachers from, from other areas, they know that something has to change. They now with Windows 10 on the uh, on the rise, or I think it's uh, right now the, the only supported Windows version, at least in a few yeah. months or so. Um, they have heard and realized that there are major privacy issues with this. And they have also realized that uh, they probably should not hand this to, uh, to children or, or students. But there isn't a solution because they are forced to use uh, Microsoft or, or, or Apple by, um, by politics. But there is interest. We, we, uh, we see that there is interest when we are at conferences, run conference booths, talk to teachers. This is growing rapidly as well. I hope that this will work out to change something w when time goes by, somehow. Uh, we managed to find a, a school in Wuppertal that, is, uh, that has now committed to only using free materials and free software whenever this is possible. There are points where this isn't possible because uh, the there is, a, uh, for example, a school management software that every school in the state has to use and this only runs on Windows. Um, but in all areas where it is possible, they committed to be free and open. And they also, uh, they also use uh, school Linux in the entire school. Um, and they are uh, also open for everyone visiting and uh, seeing how this works, uh, getting a presentation there. Um, so now we can present Debian Edu and other free software in a real world setup in, in, in a school without any limitations. Um, we had a, <laughs> a small dis dis discussion uh, among the, um, the developers that are here, uh, whether we wanted to go in the direction of su supporting uh, Microsoft Windows clients better. Debian Edu can handle Apple and Microsoft clients with, without issues. Um, but uh, we, like other school network solu solutions, we don't have stuff like providing Windows images into the network or uh, st stuff like that. Um, but we actually think that it is important that together with the software distribution, we also um, inform people and uh, help people um, get free from the, uh, from, the, from the closed ecosystems and vendor logins. This is uh, very important to us. That this is actually also packaged with the distribution in some way. <laughs> okay. Um, for the Bullseye re uh, release, we took some uh, ideas that uh, we got as feedback from, from teachers at conferences or for f also from educational conferences like the Edonautica here in Hamburg that uh, took place the last two years. And um, while in Debian Edu 10, we uh, worked on a bit of, yeah, let's say, perfectionism, getting all that is w that was there in really good shape, um, improving the features that were already there, adding a small feature here and there, like the offline installation, working together with the CD team. And now for Debian Edu 11, we hope to add some f features that modern schools uh, need for their digitalization. Uh, like mobile device management uh, to in integrate Android and iOS devices into the, net into the network and do some basic management stuff with them like pre-configuring certificates, uh, email clients, um, Nextcloud clients or something, uh, something like that. Um, we also uh, talked about integration of, of apps, so teachers who administrate such a network don't necessarily, uh, if, if they want, for example, Moodle as a learning management system, they can just get this from inside Debian Edu with a pre-configured set of options that works well with the, with the, with the rest of the system. Um, 
one point are interactive whiteboards or smart boards. Um, there's, a there's a very big closed ecosystem providing smart boards to schools and it doesn't all really work very well in, um, on Linux. Uh, Mike uh, Sunweaver, who is also part of the Debian Edu team, is working very hard on getting open board uh, into Debian to provide the smart board functionality like drawing, doing presentational stuff on an interactive whiteboard. Um, and th there's just another site for supporting the, the hardware that is used for this, which uh, will become a bit more difficult. But we will see how this, uh, how this goes. Yeah. And the last point is decentralization. So we can uh, interconnect Debian Edu networks, like when schools have a partnership and do courses together that students can use their login from one school at the other school, or if a city wants to uh, set up a, a central solution there where, where, where all schools use the same system, they can do this in a, uh, in a good way. <coughs> okay. Now this uh, slide has gone missing, I don't know when, but okay. <coughs> um, if you are in education or interested in education, uh, we need you. Uh, I, uh, I talked about what the difficulties are. There is a, uh, there's a technical side for developing, developing Debian Edu. We need more people there, but there's also the political and uh, practical side on, and, and, and marketing. Uh, I said that education is a very special user, uh, very special user base, but it's also to be seen as a uh, as a customer base. We need to sell f a free software product like it like like any other product because that's what decision makers want. They want to see ah this is a this is a whole thing that I can that I can use that I can get and this uh, this this fits my needs. While we are very proud to be the universal operating system. They don't want something that can do everything and here and they they want on the first glance they want to see um, that this is something that solves their teaching issues and their uh, school network opera operating issues. Um, and we need people who make sure to convey this, this side also. Then of course we need people who uh, maybe are uh, are working together with schools or no schools who just use Debian Edu in a, uh, in, a, in a small computer lab or something just to get things started and to, to show what's there, to use it, to, to try it out uh, and get it growing in a slow but somewhat consistent way. Okay. So that's everything from us. We have two minutes left for a short question and answer if there are are any questions, but you can also find us uh, during the rest of the conference if you're interested. Okay. Many thanks for the overview. Are there any questions? Please come to the microphone. On your slides, you talked about uh, Debian Edu and School Linux. And can oh yes. You, can you amplify, <laughs> or compare, and contrast? Um, what's new it's just two names. It's two names. Uh, there used to be two distributions: one from France, one from Norway. You can read uh, up on that on the Debian Edu, on the Debian Edu part of the Debian Wiki or in the Debian Edu manual as well. Uh, but now it's only two names for the same thing. Um, they seem to work better in different areas uh, of the world where school is understand understood better or education is understood better. Um, it also has shown that uh, school, school Linux uh, describes the the product that I told that I talked about better, uh, and Debian Edu describes uh, the fact that it is uh, included with Debian better. But it's at the end, it's just two names for the same thing. Well, I have a question uh, about those white or smart boards. Can you, if you know a bit, explain a bit more about the problems? Do you need uh, specific hardware drivers, or do they operate like regular input devices? 
How, how does that work and, and what's missing exactly? There, um, there are many, very many different uh, types of hardware. Uh, some schools use uh, a big screen or a, or a, or a projector and, a, and, a, and a touch tablet, uh, a Wacom tablet or something. This works really well because there is good hard hardware support for this. But then there are boards that li like, like, a big, like a big board, uh, in including a projector or a big screen. And um, vendors include uh, quite complicated stuff into that because they think it's fancy. Like you have different uh, color pens <coughs> and, f and you can use them for, uh, uh, for different people who interact on the whiteboard or for uh, different, uh, different functions of the whiteboard um, and stuff like that. And this is, uh, this is all closed, closed stuff. There is one big vendor called Promethean. I think they uh, do the most rigid marketing also at Deducta and other educa educational conferences. They used to have Linux support. Uh, they also used to have an open driver for, for Linux, but this is, has long gone. They decided that they only support Microsoft. Maybe they have contracts <coughs> there. Who knows? Uh, <coughs> but this has gone and we need to work on this in some way because this is what schools have. Yeah. Yeah. And is there the... Um threat that they will just put Windows 10 on the smart board and then have it totally closed off? Or is that always just a peripheral? I don't know. Ev ev everything that I have seen until now uh, is only a, a display and an input device yeah. for a computer. I don't know. Do you know of anything else? You need else? the drivers yeah. to yeah. interact with the uh, smart board. And years ago we had this Promethean thingy and there was uh, Linux support and we right. used that at school. I'm a retired teacher. Yeah. Um, and um, this is gone, so you don't have the ability to interconnect with that smart board. Right. Yeah. Well, I, at I least I you I could reverse engineer yeah. that, but I have the feeling mm -hmm. that at some point they will just put a computer into the smart board with mm -hmm. Windows 10 and then they'll just chip it as a, as a solution and there'll be no way at all to yeah. actually do anything else. So the obvious solution that we sh is that we should have uh, whiteboards including Debian Edu before they do this. <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> any, any more questions? Um, I didn't check. <coughs> no, there's... Huh? You have a question? Okay, great. Um, so when you said you didn't want to put in more w Windows support to tell people that they should rather avoid that vendor login. Um, isn't that effectively creating another vendor login? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, because the soft because Debian collects software from so many different developers and so di many different origins and sources. So as, a, as a distribution, we only put this together. M we might have patches but, uh, for, for it that, that come from Debian di directly, but I, in that regard, I see a, a distribution more like a reseller that resells stuff from all over the place, from very many different origins. This is, uh, even if it says Debian on the, on the cover, I do not think this is something that you can call vendor login. So to what degree are people actually using this? In the r how many places are, are actually using Debian Edu for, for real schools? Is it still pretty obscure, or are we getting success in some places? Well, it's been going on for quite a long time, yeah? It's at least, I don't know how many years you've been at it. Is it, is it getting better or worse? <laughs> um, it's getting... <laughs> it, it has. <laughs> it depends. Yes, it has. Uh, it has gotten worse uh, throughout the last years, but I think it's getting better now. There are uh, more than a handful of schools in, uh, in sh more than two handful of schools. I don't know. Maybe Sunweaver. If if Sun Mike, if you are listening, please uh, try to answer on IRC how many schools you are uh, supporting. Um, we do not have real numbers on that. We used to have a small map where schools can add themselves, but uh, then it turned out that in the last years it was more uh, spam more spam and uh, Viagra reselling going on there and uh, schools <laughs> <laughs> adding themselves. We don't have real numbers because we don't track users. Um, I would estimate a few hundred schools maybe yeah you, there can are the <coughs> you can tell it yes worldwide you can tell it from popcorn and also from the subscribers of the debian edu list yeah. uh, about 300 some such yeah. and then of course there are um, 
there are uh, schools that use Debian. Um, I think in, 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 in Greece there are m many, many schools that use Debian um, with LTSP and they might be using parts that we maintain or develop for Debian Edu, but they do not use Debian Edu as the whole product because, of course, you can also uh, set up parts of that on a, on, a, on a normal Debian system. So we do not have numbers. I think we should change this to have at least a few voices on a... On this is part of the marketing side. We need to have a few voices on a website that say uh, Debian Edu is great, so, but we don't have numbers right now. Yeah. Right. Okay, so if there's uh, no more questions, then let's thank Wolfgang and uh, Dominic again. Thank <laughs> you.